Go on here. I've always been fascinated with magic tricks. I've always enjoyed entertaining people. And I always liked the idea that you can take an object and do something out of the ordinary with it. Filmmaking is a lot like a magic trick. The screen is the stage. The director is, I guess, the magician. There are many lovely assistants that help misdirect and aid in the illusion. With magic and with filmmaking, you have the opportunity to take the audience on a ride and have the potential to bring wonder to their lives. The potential to. Today we're going to specifically be talking about music videos. I want to give you a few pointers that will help you set yourself up for success. Let's begin. There are several different stages or steps that you're going to want to take when prepping and filming and editing a music video. The main music video I want to look at is the Inverted Forest music video by JD. One of the first stages is a stage I'd like to call the call stage. So this stage is where you will talk with the artists that you're making a music video for. Just get their ideas as far as concepts and visuals that they see within the lyrics. That brings us to the next stage, the broken record stage. The broken record stage is simply listening to the song over and over and over again and become super familiar with it. You're gonna to wanna to make notes on specific visuals that you hear um, with songs beyond what the artist has really expressed that they would like to see. The next stage is really the outline stage. So open up a Google Doc or old school, just pen and paper. Have the music close by where you can listen to it. Listen and then pause. Write down, at this point in the song, this is gonna to happen to start off. Listen to it a little more. Oh, okay. I know what's going to happen here. Write it down. Next point, next point. Keep doing that until you've gone through the entire music video. The character of Ted Silver, we had him in, you know, very vaguely in the Rose Colored Lenses music video and then very heavily featured in the Modern Era music video. So it only made sense to bring him back for the Inverted Forest music video. So we were still working on the outline of modern era and had the idea for inverted forest. One of the first ideas was what if what if the forest was inside of a painting by Ted Silver and what if he could manipulate the painting and then inside the world it would alter things as well. That's essentially was a starting point and so we knew that he was going to paint the inverted forest and that that would be the start of the inverted forest music video so when we were working on modern era we decided at the end the last shot would be to have them walk out with a set of paint brushes and some canvases so that it would smoothly transition into the next music video that was something that we did that that is world building world building is essentially adding details that combine music videos in this sense or just make things look worn or that they've been lived in not not just that the world lives only in this one music video but that it's expansive i feel it really captures the how should i put this the messiness of our world after you've outlined the music video you're going to want to go and show it to the artist see what they think see any ideas they have so this stage is called the callback stage you really want to get as much on the same page as you can before shooting so that when you're on set, it's just a lot more smooth. Once you hear back, 
figure out if there's any changes that they want made, work on those and tweak, tweak the outline. If they're confused about something, make sure you know why you're doing certain things so you can more clearly communicate. I put this here because of this, not just, oh, I thought it would look cool, but try to give a little more to it. You want them to trust you with the lyrics too. So make sure you really know the song and use the song as a reference when explaining it to them, uh, what your thought process is. But if they don't want it, obviously you have to be flexible. Once the outline is complete and everyone's happy with it, you're gonna want to have the gathering stage. You're gonna go through and highlight or mark or whatever you need to do. Sometimes I like to highlight, this color means prop. This color means maybe like a stunt. So go through and mark those things and then gather all of those ideas and make a list. Maybe it's props. Make a list of all the props that you need. With this music video, we had quite a few props that had to be made. So building the props, showing them to the artists, see if they like them, what tweaks they want done with them. So just always keep a constant communication flow going so that there aren't any question marks when we're filming because that's when you are using up a lot of people's time and money. Yeah, the more prepared you are, the more stress-free and more relaxing it'll be on set. So be as prepared as you can. A phrase to remember is mock it up or muck it up. If you don't mock it up, if you don't plan, if you don't prepare, you're less likely to succeed and you're most more likely to muck it up. You're more likely to compromise more than you should if you don't prepare. For instance, one of the things I was most nervous about was if the forest fire effect would work well. So I had my wife Katie help and we went to some woods and we did some test shots. I did a test shot of walking through the woods, walking towards fire, fire, and look at me. Nice. I used some action VFX assets that were watermarked just because I wanted to test it before I bought them, but definitely worth buying. It was working and I was excited about that. Sent that to Jarrett and Ashton and they were excited about that, what it was going to look like. Sent it to Jay so he didn't think that he was going to look dumb. <laughs> I was trying to ensure him that it would look cool, a cool introduction. I did some inverter tests. That was a little bit of an abstract character and we couldn't really show it too much or else it would look kind of goofy. So I had to do some tests on that. Um, so I felt better because I know that we've done it before. So once you've prepped everything, you've talked to the artists about what they want, you've listened to the song many times, have it like a muscle memory at this point, and you have the outline made, you've talked to the artists about that back and forth, make sure they like it, you've gathered everything you need, people, props, locations, you have the crew that you need, now it's time to film the music video. This next stage is the capture stage. Inverted Forest took us a day and a half, something like that, to film. Go through, film, film the video, have fun as much fun as you can. Make sure you keep it a little loose if you can to like be willing to collaborate on set if someone has a good idea. Don't be too stubborn to the outline. Like there, every music video, something hasn't gone exactly how we wanted or didn't have enough time. So you have to be flexible and 
changing up a few aspects of it. I would suggest always shooting some performance shots too. So you always have something to cut to in case something doesn't work out. Film at least a couple takes of, of the full song run through just so you have a backup. So you've shot it, you've got everything on hard drives. It's now time for you to edit the piece. Editing is the process of arranging the shots of a film. It is generally considered the most important and powerful element of filmmaking. Editing gives a film its sense and continuity so that it can tell its story clearly. Good editing keeps a film interesting. Splicing is the basic mechanical task of film editing. There are so many different ways you can recut a music video. I think for this one, it was just a lot had to happen in the song. So there were some shots that we filmed narratively that we had to cut, I had to cut out just because it would have been way too cramped in the edit and you have to let it breathe. It can't just be boom, 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 boom. Unless the song is da 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 but it's usually not. A song usually takes you on a journey too, so it's slow, fast, slow, fast at times. So you have to, you know, edit with the music, match it visually what's happening musically. This is one of my favorite parts because there's, there's the stress of you need to get the video done but it's also you're just alone essentially and you, you don't have to think about all the moving parts. It's here are all the moving parts right here. And I just have to take that footage, cut it together, rearrange it. And when I'm filming, I'm editing in my mind as far as like this shot goes here. Okay, then we can cut to this shot and it'll work. There might be moments when you're editing and realize there's something in the outline that we needed that we forgot to capture. So this would be called a pickup shot. There was one in inverted forest. It was pretty important and I forgot to shoot it. We wanted the shot of the glasses catching on fire. You know, they tried to break these glasses throughout the music video and then finally they're starting to get, starting to decay and become destroyed. So for that shot, it was really the last shot I end up doing and you would think for the last shot of a music video is like exciting and you know there's clapping and everything but what it really was was me in my backyard with a stool and then a piece of extra hardwood floor laying around my house and set the glasses on it and then I have a Godox light that has a fire flicker effect which I used a lot when filming and that's essentially what it was. It was just me sitting there filming. If you do well, no one will ever notice that you did it after the fact. So when you finish the edit, you do a rough cut, send that. So I did some cuts, sent it to Jared and Ashton, and then they made some comments. And then I went and finished all of Jay's shots because those took the most time uh, to track, those, track the fire in and make it look like it's somewhat realistic. Because you don't want to, you don't want to animate, you don't want to add effects to anything that could get cut out. So you want to make sure that the, the the cut is locked, no more changes. Go in, add the effects, so that you're not you're not wasting any time with that. Then there's the color stage, the sound design, so all those things. So those are what really take it to the next level. Color it really takes it to the next level. So I use DaVinci Resolve to color it and. Yeah, so once it's colored and uh, you've messed with sound design. Then it's time to export it and send it off. Your goal for a music video is to amplify the song. The goal is to show more of what the artist is intending through the video. Your goal is to to help the artist in a different medium that's not theirs. Theirs is music and your 
you're an artist using a different kind of tool, a different kind of utensil.